Oh, landmines and jellyfish. Welcome back to Knives, I guess. And one time I saw Optimus Prime at a Captain D's in Cartersville. Anyhow, buckle your underwears. We got a good one. It's going to be the state of the collection. And we're going through everything that I have that I can find in a reasonable amount of time. I'm sure I got a couple others floating around. And this is just pocket knives. Not worried about the fixed blades, just the pocket knives. I figured this might be interesting. And if somebody wants to kill some of their valuable time sitting through the whole thing... Be my guest. I had to make it. But we're going to start off with cracking out the uh, unboxing knife. And if you've watched the unboxing times, you've seen this thing more than once. And uh, I got this from a guy in a Walmart parking lot for 15 bucks. Um, he was selling stuff to raise money for his church for whatever random reasons he had. Um, I don't know how legit he was, but I was like, automatic knife, 15 bucks. How bad can it be? And of course, it's tip down. And I hate tip down, but we all live in sin. However, I got a couple videos at it, and uh, it makes a good unboxing knife. So we got that right there, and we're going to go through the backlog of things that I haven't tested or I haven't reviewed yet. And of course, we got the Ontario Rat 2, and this thing speaks for itself. Everybody knows what this is. Everybody knows what it does. I just haven't carried it and done my review on it, but I know I am very tardy to that party. But we're going to do it anyways. Uh, next up, we got this GVDV. I forget the series name, but let's flick the bean. Eh. Um, this thing was 14 bucks. Um, right now you can get a black one on Amazon for 10 bucks. I don't know if that sale has ended right now or not, but one of my guys just got one. And uh, I'm going to carry this and review it. I've had it for a little while now. I've got a good impression so far from a little bit of carry time, but we're going to see what living with it for a week is like. Um, next up, we got the uh, Cold Steel 1911. Let's flick the bean. Eh. Y'all are going to get tired of hearing let's flick the bean before this is over with. I guarantee it. But I love me some cold steel. I am a huge fan of the 1911 platform, so this really spoke to me. And, uh, of course, tip up pocket clip, Lord's carry. We're, we're not going to go into that every single time. You know what? I'm going to save you all some misery. But I do want to find out what this is like for a week. I carried it for a day and liked it, so it's going to get the review. Um, we've got the Duratec with the liner lock. We did the axis lock, and that thing performed phenomenally well. So I expect good things out of this one, but I have yet to carry it and review it, so... We're going to see how it do. Um, and then we got the one that I've been waiting on and edging on quite a bit, and that is the Artisan Cutlery Proponent. you got a big old pocket slab right here. I love my pocket cleavers. I love these things. I got to carry this for like a day, and I very much enjoyed it, and I am looking forward to the week that I'm going to spend with it, and it's going to be in the regular rotation for when I'm not reviewing knives actively and doing other stuff. So next up, we're going to go into the live stream knives that I have set aside right now. Um, that seems like a good place to go. So if you're watching the live streams, these, some of these are going to pop up. The 20 sided die decides. But we got the Kajurb, and this is the Tigris. And I've carried this off and on. There's some discomfort with it. It rubs and it digs a little bit. I'm worried about the Ergos, but we're going to find out about that one whenever the dice pick it. Or the die, if you want to be pedantic. We have got the SOG Terminus XR, which uh, it's a good knife, but that pocket clip lets it down, and SOG's customer service let me down. So, this is going to get Cardboard Slayer. Um, up next, we have got the OG um, CRKT CEO, and I am a fan of this platform, but the uh, flipper tab's a lot better, so we're going to run this one through Cardboard Slayer, see how it holds up. I'm expecting good things, because this is a very thin, slicey blade. Kind of looking forward to that one. Uh, we have got this uh, Ethan Grow, and it doesn't have a model number on it. It says it's D2, but that's a bit of a thick chunk of steel. So this will be fun to cut with for however many hours it lasts. Um, Gerber Quadrant got this guy, and I've done the video on it. You know, I finally absolved it of its sins, and it's a decent knife now. However, I got so much stuff to carry that um, this thing is kind of waiting in the wings. And I may set this aside for review before we do a... Uh, live stream on it because I never actually carried it. I just realized that I've never actually carried this thing um, The pivot was so bad on it because of this uh, liner lock that it wasn't carryable or at least it wasn't usable the, the way it was intended to be so actually I'm setting this aside for review. It was bad out of the box, and I think I made it decent uh, We have got this uh, Dragon gas station grade knife, and this is because I believe it's 440 steel um, Yeah 440 stainless so we really haven't tested out new 440 yet, so we got a viable candidate for that. We've got this Ganzo right here. Like, I, I do have some Ganzos. 
I don't know what this is a clone of, if anything, but I picked it up when I was looking for affordable access locks um, before I bought the bug out. So we got this here, and I think um, 440C. So we got some modern 440 candidates to throw at Cardboard Slayer. We have got the Kershaw filter, I believe. And uh, this one, I don't know what the steel is off the top of my head, but, you know, we haven't thrown a Kershaw at it yet. And these are all knives I don't particularly care to carry, so they're good candidates for Cardboard Slayer. And then we got the old school Gerber Paraframe. And uh, they won't tell you what the steel is in this thing, so, yeah, we don't know what it is, but I figured, why not? We'll throw this at Cardboard Slayer and see how it do. And then, last but not least, we got the Civivi Cogent. And uh, we haven't done a Civivi yet. Um, I'll have to look up the steel on that, but the, the blade bounce is so bad on this button lock that, uh, you know, it's one that I don't find particularly carryable, which is a shame because I like, I like a good button lock, and this one is, you know, everything else is put together well. They got a lot of things right, but the blade bounce on that's god-awful. So that's our future uh, uh, live stream knives, and the quadrant got pulled so I can carry it for review before we do that. Um, up next, we have got... Super budget showdown knives from season one. And uh, those of y'all that haven't seen that series, I'd love it if you go watch. Uh, that was 10 weeks of work. But of course we got the Duratec Axis Lock with the uh, centrifugal flick and everything else going on. This took first place and it was a very, very, very good knife. Um, GVDVZD18, this place kind of in the middle of the pack. It's a decent carry and it's cheap enough to warrant picking up if you're interested. You just got to get used to the stump plate. Um, I really like the Art Deco style on the handle. Like, it does look like something from the 1920s. So, it's got it's got some good looks. I am not offended by it. And, of course, we got this Buckshot Knives uh, Rainbow Dealy. We put this through Cardboard Slayer, and it's 3CR13. And it took, I think, three and a half hours of cuts, and then it just needed to be stropped. It still wasn't a totally wrecked edge. Uh, we got the Smith & Wesson Garbage right here. Um, this thing took, uh, I believe, last place, if memory serves. And it's just because the build quality was so bad. Um, I've messed with it a little bit and got it at least working. But yeah, out of the box from the factory. Jesus. And uh, this is going to be a live stream knife. That's what's going to happen to this one. We're going to live stream that. And of course, we got the Crescent Tools uh, CPK th uh, 350C. And it's in 5CR. And this took second place in the Super Budget Showdown. It was really good. And for the price, you cannot beat this. Uh, when I bought this, it was 12 bucks on Amazon. Uh, of course, we've got the Harbor Freight Gordon Knife, and this thing blew me away by a lot. And uh, I definitely highly recommend it for a $10 knife. Um, just one thing I wouldn't do is heavy piercing cuts and anything that puts pressure on the back of the blade, because that lock is kind of thin. Everything else about it, though, Skookum is frig. Um, we've got the Camillus Wedge. And this thing is okay. It's a decent price. I think it was like 13 bucks. It carried decent. It worked decent. That being said, I feel like this is more of a either fifth pocket knife, maybe, or a toolbox knife more than anything else. Um, you can, you know, I would whale on this thing and, you know, give it what for and not feel bad about it. We got the Camillus Chaff, and this is another one that it was decent out of the box. Uh, the only thing you're really missing is there's not really a strong detent, so you got to flick it to open it. Not a big deal. Um, and this thing started off decent in the showdown, but wound up middle of the pack, um, just like the other Camillus and the uh, GVDB. Uh, we got a Lara Silva knife right here, and uh, I think this is a clone of something after, uh, after the showdown was over, and I saw something else floating around. It is very Spider Co ish, but this thing didn't carry well. It didn't handle well. It just wasn't a good experience overall, so I think there was also discomfort on its turn at Cardboard Slayer. Um, we got this guy right here. I can't remember who made this now. It's not marked on the blade, but we got super, super fake Damascus right here. It's laser etched. And uh, you've got a very comfortable handle. You've got a very good cutting blade. I think this was also 13 bucks on eBay. It wound up being a really good deal. Um, I do like the visuals on this, the pack of wood with the blue uh, liners and uh, and uh, pocket clip and the, the studs and the screws. Like, I like the way it looks. It's a bit gas station-y, but I do like it. You know, and, and that's the stuff from the OG Super Budget Showdown. Um, yeah, we're going to throw this in the mix for the live stream for something that I don't want to live stream with. Um, I think you guys do appreciate it when I do knives that I don't really want to have to use. There's some entertainment value to be had in there. And then we got the Team Wigetton knives that I still have. And, of course, we got the Strider clone right here, which... Uh, 
it was okay up until Cardboard Slayer and Bad Ergonomics showed up. Um, we got the, the winner with the Best Factory Edge and the painted blade that I wanted to wear out. I'm trying to find another painted blade for the live stream right now. Um, see if I can't have fun wearing the paint off while you guys are watching. Um, we got this piece of garbage. It took a... I think it took about two hours and some change, two and a half hours before it wore out on Cardboard Slayer on a live stream. But that was after I sharpened it and stropped the hell out of it. So it was going in with a not factory edge. On the factory edge, this thing just... This is one of the worst knives I've ever handled um, by a lot. We got this guy right here. And uh, I hit the box. But this thing was okay. And it would have been a lot better if the pocket clip was any good. But the, the way the dingus into this thing is shaped, it hits you every time you brush it, basically. And it starts to wear in. Uh, we got... This guy right here, this branded as Browning from Timu, and uh, this is a clone of something. I know someone pointed it out at one point, and I can't remember what they said it was. Um, we got this guy right here, and it's branded Chongming, and you got, again, really fake feather pattern Damascus. I like the etch on the bolsters against the wood. I do. I'd like to see more stuff like this, only made a lot better. Uh, we got this thing right here. I don't have branding on these, so you got to bear with me. But this is a clone of a Free Tiger, and it says it's in D2. And this thing also really, really bad uh, Ergo showed up during Cardboard Slayer. I hated that one. Uh, we got this one, and I've described it as I've described it as a face only a flea market could love. The blade is marked M390, which I highly, highly doubt. But I may need to sharpen this thing and put it through another round of Cardboard Slayer just to see how it do. Um... Yeah, maybe I'll throw this in with a live stream mix. Maybe I won't. And then last but last but definitely least, we got this one, Mark Browning, right here. And everything about this was okay. Kind of unremarkable, but it did okay. It uh, it placed on the, the top five, I think, in the Super Budget Showdown. Team Mugetan Edition. So we got those guys. Oh, live stream. That's right. Let me put that in the live stream box before I forget about it. And we're barely getting started. So we'll get into the box of stuff that I've either already used or don't have much of a use for at the moment. So first off, we've got this guy right here. It's a Shrade. And we put this through Cardboard Slayer on a live stream to see if we could wear the coating off. But it's like a titanium nitride coating, so it didn't go anywhere. Uh, it's tipped down, but the tip was causing a, a lot of discomfort, so it got removed. Um, we have got this uh, another Ethan Grow. But the problems I have with this are none of the edges right here are broken down at all. So when you use the thumb hole, it does start shredding your skin pretty quickly. Um, like everything on this is a sharp edge um, that's not supposed to be sharp. And this is also a clone of a Decepticon made by somebody and I can't remember who. Um, We've got the Kershaw starter, the one that came with the deck of cards. And uh, this is a cool little piece. Um, I bought this before I started really getting back into it, and it's tipped down, but I'd say it was still a decent value, especially with the novelty of the cards. Uh, we got this one that I won from Tim's School of Fish, and if it looks familiar, this is a Ned Foss, but it's the exact same as the Timu Geddon version, just bigger. And it's a clone of something, but I can't remember what it is. However, this thing is an absolute pocket sword, and it weighs almost as much as the Catholic Church. Uh, next up, we got the... Uh, Kershaw camshaft. There we are. Another good budget buy. I think it was like 22 bucks. And uh, this thing wound up being a really good, comfortable little carry. I probably need to grab this and do a full review on it. I think when I started the channel, I was only doing shorts. And this one didn't really get a, a comprehensive review. Um, so I may, I may circle back around. I got to search through all my videos and see what I haven't actually done a full review on. So we got the CRKT Van Hoy snap lock right here. And you guys know I love my weird knives. And this one opened sideways. And uh, this was one, I think it was like 55 bucks or something like that, but I had to have it. Um, it's really hard to carry. The, the lug right here on the end hangs up on everything going into and out of the waistband or the pocket. So, eh, it's an art piece. It's a show-off piece. And if I've got a spare pocket on cargo pants, I can carry it, but I can't carry it every day for work. And then, of course, tied to that, we got the CRKT Dactyl, another one that opens up sideways. And when I saw this, I had to get it. It's just too funky to pass up. Um, you guys have seen the videos. You know how I feel about it. I love it. We got this goofiness I got right here whenever I first uh, when I first uh, started my Amazon account. This is one of the first things I got. And, of course, it's a Tac Force. And I don't really buy Tac Force anymore. I've learned better. 
But the more I'm learning about these cheap knives and the cheap steel, the more I'm starting to like them and the less I'm starting to care about stuff like that. Um, I do need to get a TAC Force and maybe an MTech on the live stream and see how they do. And then we got Kershaw Misdirect, which uh, this was part of a package for 28 bucks with the uh, Shuffle 2. And it's a good enough knife, however, when you're trying to close it one-handed, this thing is super slippery, so it tends to slide around and gets a little difficult to close, especially if your hands are dry. But otherwise, it's a decent knife. Um, I don't know if I've carried this for the full week yet. i got to go back through my videos and see what I actually, I've actually done. Um, old Gerber paraframe that belonged to my uncle before he passed away. And uh, highly sentimental. The Buck Knives Decatur. This got part of a live stream because the ergos on the knife I had sucked so bad. And uh, I, I had a couple small issues with the, uh, the edges on this not being broken down. And the pocket clip being really, really weak and hanging up on everything. So... This got its carry, and I I, I want to like it, but I kind of don't. Um, GVDB Zodiac, that thing's been carried and reviewed recently, and you guys know it was like a $11 or $12 find on Amazon when it was on sale, and there was a 35% off on top of the 10% off. So, yeah, this was definitely a good little find. Um, I have no idea what this is, but it belonged to my uncle before he passed away, so it resides in the collection. Um, he did buy a lot of far cheaper knives than I buy, so I got it from somewhere. Um, this is another Ganzo I got. It's a clone of a bird, um, which is, again, before I really got into knives and got into buy buying stuff and saw where I don't really like clones all that much. And, wow, that just caught my pinky nail hard. Got real lucky on that one, boys. And, of course, we've got the uh, Ozark Trail Axis Lock. And uh, I do like this thing. I carried it for a week. I did the review, and it's decent. Steel's a little bit soft, but it's decent. Um, we got the Winchester knife that I put resin scales on that I made, and, uh, this one went through a cardboard slayer, and I think it took, uh, around two hours of just smashing cardboard out before it needed a strop, and nothing more than a strop. Uh, the other Ozark Trail Axis Lock, and this one really, really did not hold up well. Um, we think the steel is 420J, and that's part of why it, uh, the edge broke down so fast. Um, another Gerber paraframe that I bought myself, which is, again, I got back into knives, and this is one that my uncle had, so I was like, yeah, this is pretty good, he liked Gerber, so I was like, I'll start there. Um, you know, it's a good knife for its time, and it's a good knife for what it is, but it's being blown out of the water by so many things in the same price range that it's no longer relevant. Um, Opinel number eight, um, this is the one that got fed to the live stream, I believe. Yep, it is. It did pretty well, I forget the amount of time it took, but... It did okay on that live stream. Um, we got another Ganzo here, and I've seen a few companies make this exact same pattern. I don't know if it's a clone of anything more expensive, but it exists. And if it was tip up, I'd definitely like it a whole lot more, but eh. And this might be a live stream knife. Um, when I start running out of knives, I'll dig through and find stuff like this. Um, another one that belonged to my uncle, it's an automatic knife, 440 stainless Taiwan. No other marking on it, and if it wasn't serrated, this would be a live stream just for the 440, but we already have enough 440. However, I'm pretty sure that's old 440, which means there's a bit of a difference. And we got the Shuffle 2 right here that came with the Misdirect, and I would love this knife to death if it didn't have the bottle opener that I have no use for and the pocket clip was tip-up. This would be a fantastic knife. As it is, it's something I can throw in my toolbox or throw in the console of the car in case I forget a knife and I you know, end up needing something. And, of course, we got the two uh, Minimalists, the Cleaver, which I had to have, and the Minimalist Bowie, which, they're both great little knives. Um, I don't carry neck knives, or these would already have some time on them. Um, Gerber Jukebox, this is one that I've got. I haven't carried it because this right here digs in like crazy um, into the left handle on the waistband. So, this is not really an EDC for me, but the scales on it are absolutely beautiful. I do like the uh, friction folder style open, and that being said, it's got the same rough kind of wonky grind on it that the uh, the quadrant has on it. So, like quality issues, um, like fit and finish issues are there, but it's still a pretty knife. It, it's a cool little piece, but not the best. Um, we got this, and I can't remember the the letter combination that is the company name on it, but I got it because I wanted this. Uh, this etch, that it feels like it's engraved. I know it's not engraved. That's too much work. But it still entertains me. Um, even though it's tipped down, it carried well enough. It was comfortable enough. I used it enough. 
um, before I became a disciple of Tip Up Carry. Uh, we have got the Best Tech uh, Dundee, which this is a good knife. However, I'm not sure how I did it, but this thing opened up partly in my waistband and stabbed my hand to hell and back whenever I went to tuck my shirt in. I don't know what I did wrong, but I'm scared of this thing now. It's tasted blood and it wants more. And then, of course, we got the uh, the Browning knockoff from Timu that took an ungodly amount of hours of abuse on Cardboard Slayer, and the edge really didn't wear down that much. Whatever steel they used, whatever heat treatment they used, they got that right, but everything else feels as cheap as it gets. Uh, then we got the other Winchester that I put my own scales on. This is a spalted crosscut dogwood. I'm actually proud of how this thing looks, even though there's cracks and one of everything wrong with it. Um, I went in there not knowing much and got the work done. Uh, we got another Ganzo that I picked up, and I'm not sure why I picked this one up. But this is why I say, like, the build quality is there with Ganzo, but I can't trust that I'm not buying a blatant clone of something. And uh, that really bothers me. And this is one of the Firebird knives. This is the one that I threw in my shop in case I needed to cut something, and I never need to cut something um, because I'm in the shop. Like, I'm not sure why, but it sat there, and I don't think it's... It might have cut paper once, and that's about it. So we've also got this guy that belonged to my uncle before he passed away, and... Magnum, I think this is a uh, on the Boker end of things. I could be wrong. Um, I don't see the Boker anywhere on there, and I know Boker makes some Magnum stuff, but I don't know if it's the same Magnum as this. Uh, we got the other um, Ozark Trail and flipper tab, a little nice little cleaver and uh, straight razor style. And it's the only other one I could find that was tip up. If the rest of them were tip up, which they could have been. I'd have a lot more Ozark Trails and a lot more reviews on those just because a $5 knife is fun to mess around with, especially when you don't have to have any mechanical sympathy whatsoever. So we got another uh, paraframe, and I had this put on here. That's the name of my shop. That's the when I'm, when I'm doing blacksmithing. That's it right there. And, of course, that's my channel logo. So uh, th that is my logo for all things that need a logo. Uh, another micro paraframe. This one is a, a locker. I was thinking slip joint before I opened it. I got this. I'm like, I'm going to fifth pocket carry this. Most of my pants don't have a fifth pocket. Like, I don't have a fifth pocket at work, so I don't really have a good use for that thing. Also, miniature paraframe. And that's why I had that one. Is uh, I got that on it. It's, I think it was like 20 bucks to do that. Um, like, the knife and the uh, engraving were 20 bucks. Um, yeah, so... The last one is a, the Sativian ST-155, and I just smashed my finger in it. Um, I dislike this thing so much. They got so many things wrong. If you go back, there's a video on it not too long ago about how much they screwed up on this one. But that's that box right there. Um, we're going into the next box. Yeah, we're not done yet, gentlemen. Like I said, I got everything I could find in a reasonable amount of time. And I do mean everything. So next up, we'll take a look at the rest of the stuff my uncle had as far as folding knives go, and we'll move on to the last box. So we got this guy right here, more of a staghorn traditional. There's no markings on it for who made it or anything, so it's just a it's just a slip joint. Um, miniature miniature pin knife right here. The crown on it, I, I know I looked up the brand at one point to see what it was, and someone told me what it was a long time ago, but I can't read that. That is way too tiny. Maybe you can, but yeah. I don't know who made that, but it exists. We got this lineman's knife that is just about completely locked up. Um, I've gotten this blade to move, but I can't get this blade to move without jamming something in and prying it in there. So this is also, I believe, a liner lock of some sort. Yeah, um, no, this one's a slip joint. The other blade locks. That's what it is. Uh, we got this one that came from where he worked right before he passed away. He worked for Greenfield Industries. He was a machinist there. And uh, this is a Schrade 1250T, but it's customized for the guys at Greenfield Industries. So a really cool little piece, and it's a liner lock. And uh, 
you know, I've had this for, you know, I've had this since he passed away, like in 07. I may have gotten this in early 08 whenever they uh, found the box and went, I know you'd like this, so here. Um, we've got, uh, yeah, a Sheffield. This came with a cheap multi-tool. And so this is the kind of stuff he'd buy. This one, I think he had it and never actually used it, which is rare. A lot of these knives got a lot of wear and tear and beating on them. Um, we have got this uh, Gerber Easy Out. And uh, this one, he definitely carried it and got some use out of it. Um, but this is a cool little piece. And I'd love to have a tip-up version, but I managed to straighten the pocket clip out on this one and get it back to hole again. So it's a nice little piece.